<laughs> What's up, my know-it-alls? Welcome aboard the USS Know-It-All. This week's episode of Star Trek Discovery is amazingly fun. It's a filler episode, but they do a lot of things to keep this roller coaster going. Burnham herself is continuing hot on the trail of Lock and Maul, making sure that she stays ahead of the game by visiting Trill to investigate some more uh, uncovered secrets having to do with uh, with the, the hidden progenitor technology that may or may not be out there. Rainer is doing his best to make friends and play nice. Gray and Adira have to navigate what exactly is going on in their relationship. Is there something? Isn't there something? And then, of course, Saru, who not only is beginning to be an ambassador, but has to navigate his new engagement and potentially what that could mean for his future wife's political aspirations in her career. All that and more starts right now. Zora! Yes, Mr. know it Hope you had a really good week. Do me a favor, please play that intro. Certainly. Previously on Star Trek Discovery, Mr. Saru accepted an offer to serve as an ambassador for Starfleet. Captain Rayner, newly demoted, is given a second chance by Captain Burnham and becomes the Discovery's new first officer. Tasked with recovering the progenitor tech at all costs before it can fall into the wrong hands, Captain Burnham must follow the clues to unlock the power of creation itself before former couriers Locke and Maul locate it for themselves. Thank you for the recap, Zora. I really appreciate that. Certainly. All right, here we go. The episode is actually really in in dense. This is definitely what we would call a filler episode, meaning by that I just mean they're having to fill a lot of things in the pipeline. So a filler episode, for those of you playing at home, is one where they have to... some people like to think of filler episodes as, oh, it's just filler. It doesn't mean matter anything. No, what what that means is the overarching plot is not specifically addressed in any great exciting detail. Meaning there's not exactly a a fast pace or a way that's taking us there faster. What's happening is we've got to navigate slowly through sort of those plot threads and we'll get somewhere. Usually these episodes tend to be connective tissue between other major events that are going on. So let's get into it. There's four plots happening. Uh, Some are more important than others. So I'm gonna get the smaller ones out of the way really quickly. Uh, first and foremost in this episode, we have what I'm going to call the D-plot. The D-plot is Adira and Grey. Adira and Grey are facing right now a relationship um, status shift. For those of you playing at home, back in the day, little thing when Azure people were using Facebook, uh, this is the thing you might say, it's complicated? The end result is that they decide that they want to take kind of a, a, they, they want, they're going to break up, but that doesn't mean they're not going to still be friends and care for one another. Now, obviously, Grey is a synthetic, uh, much like Picard was at the end of Picard, Uh, season two going into season three and it's one of those things that says well what is exactly what does that mean for the characters of gray and or adira i am assuming that that means that gray is going to become much more of a recurring less of a recurring rather and more of a a sort of a cameo that will happen every now and again Uh, they might do stuff via via video and whatnot but ultimately their relationship for the most part has run its course at least in the current way that it is now Okay, that's literally the sum total of the D, of, of this D plot. We are going to revisit Adira at the end of the episode, but I'll get back to that. So next you have Saru. So Saru, in our C plot, Saru is, he's he's gotten engaged, and his wife is very much, or his future wife, Tarina, uh, the president of Navarre, is very much, ex- she's as excited as Vulcans can be to try to get that particular storyline or to get their announcement out. And... You see immediately from her assistant, who's like, you can, we're gonna put up today, like right now. Okay. And he goes off and you're like, oh, uh, okay. That's a weird way to behave, but I, I guess I get it. So what he does, he goes he goes back and sees Saru and he says to Saru, look man, I, I, logic dictates uh, when, I, when I do the math, I gotta come to you. You guys really should postpone your 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 uh, not even not even postpone the announcement, postpone like the engagement in general because it could have been it could it could potentially have uh, a really harsh effects on Tarina's political aspirations and her career moving forward. Uh, mainly because there's a faction of Vulcan purists, which I've always loved that idea, who are who are not only against all of this involvement with the Federation and everything else that's happened again, but mostly they're also concerned. With the idea that there's so that, that there's so many other cultures influencing them, 
now their president is literally going to get engaged to a not even a quote but it is he's obviously Saru is obviously a human rights species but you know what I'm saying like like it feels way too extreme for them I mean think about that for a second Sarek got a hard time he was given all kinds of nonsense when he got with his wife I cannot imagine what the president of Navarre is going to have to deal with potentially when she brings home her uh, her new husband guess who's coming to dinner okay all right Literally, that's the thing. They, they, there's this little scuffle where he tries to say something, she gets upset about it, and uh, and then finally, at the end, he's like, "Look, I should have done this and then blah blah blah." It's literally a plot thread that comes and goes. Is all it goes almost as fast as it came, and it literally is just so that we don't forget that these characters exist and are still here dealing with their things at the same time. Um, shifting into the B plot, the B plot is Rainer. Rainer in the very beginning is like, "There are better ways to use me. I mean, both agree that connection is not exactly where my skill set lies." Connection isn't a skill, it's a choice. It's, it's busy work, because quite frankly, their wonderful computer has every ability to go ahead and handle that herself. So why in the world are they going to sit here and waste resources? So what does uh, what does the captain do? She says, no, you know what? You're going to stick here. You're not going to go with me down to, down to trail. We're going to stay here, and I want you to get to know everybody. Literally, that's what they want to do. So uh, Rainer is being set up to understand a little bit better about what's going on with the crew. He has this whole situation. Tilly has been assigned to take him around the ship and sort of help him introduce and meet everybody and have this FaceTime one-on-ones. He's, however, in the science lab, essentially doing Zora's job. My job. I know, right? Good luck. So what does that mean? In essence... He has, he's, he's like, all right, and Tilly puts her foot down, God love her, and so what he does is he agrees, he's like, all right, fine, they can come to me, five minute intervals, let's go. The first couple, he literally, he has, he's like, in 20 words or less, tell me something about you I can't find in your file. And that's really the extent of it. At some point or other, Tilly bursts out at him and is like, you can't, you can't do this. Mainly because what happens is Stamets comes up and he's excited. He's excited for what the progenitor technology could mean. He's excited uh, for, for the kind of scientific advancement Remember, the sport drive program is shut down. That's not happening. So, he's trying to find new purpose. This progenitor technology could very well end up being that new purpose, especially because of the fact that in the right hands, it could it could do anything. It could bring people back to life, potentially. It could create life from scratch. I mean, it's, it's unbelievable. Raider points out, It sounds like it'd be very dangerous in the wrong hands. Well, Yes, but think of all the good it could do in the right ones. I think we're going to find out later on that most likely it's going to end up being Stamets' hands. I'm seeing some foreshadowing about things to come. Anyway, Rainer sort of poo-poos him, kicks him out. And so Tilly's like, what is wrong with you? I haven't seen him that excited about anything in a while, and you just, be you're a jerk. What does that do? Essentially, she she leaves, and a little bit later, Rainer comes to her in, in, uh, in their, their lounge, and he says, look, and he tells her some stuff about the evaluations about some of the crew that they've met. And she's like, look, analyzing their files is not the same thing as knowing them. You have to understand these people, especially if you want to command them, if you want to be part of their leadership. And so he's, he's, he explains, well, when I was on my ship, the we had, and there was a shorthand. Everyone understood. And she's like, they'll get there. But you have to make the effort to show them that you care about them as people. And that's kind of where they leave that. They don't resolve this, which tells me it's going to be part of his continuing ongoing development of that particular character. And on top of everything else happening, that's a lot to put on. Because remember, every season of Discovery is essentially a one adventure. In the old series, it would have been a two-parter or something, but it would have been a big story, and then they would have had to break it up. But this one, they, every episode is a chapter in the novel that is this season's adventure. So, with that in mind, I think we're going to see more development of his character over time and potentially see some lead up. Remember, they filmed this season with no knowledge that the show was going to be canceled. So, there are probably a lot of interconnected plot threads that would have been designed to be sort of dangling participles that would have led to something else in the future. Um, at, when the announcement did finally come through that the show was canceled, they allowed the showrunners, Kurtzman and them, asked to Paramount, can you at least give us the opportunity to, to, to wrap up these threads and film a coda? And I think that's what we're going to end up getting it toward the end of the season, is more of this wrapped up stuff that sort of puts a nice bow on not only Discovery, but the season itself. Okay? Now, finally, on to the big adventure. So, the entire thing is about Burnham, and she, they're finally, they're continuing from last week, 
which is their, they have gotten the poem, they know, they've set up sensors back on Lyric, which is the planet they were at before. So as they're going to trill, the sensors eventually get tripped that say that, hey, Lock and Maul, they've gone back to Lyric. That means they realize that what they're looking for was not in Beta Z, and they have to get back there. So when they arrive, at, when uh, when the Discovery arrives at Trill, they get met and they they're told, "Hey, you got to answer a quick question of Rid's riddle." There's a question you must answer. I'm not sure you understand the stakes. This here. is not a matter for debate. You must answer the question. They answer the riddle. They go down. They meet a a uh, uh, a named Bix, a former. I say former Trill. The it's a Trill who 800 years ago was a scientist. So the there's a person who's been waiting, waiting for this encounter, waiting for this question. And when they go down, that's where they end up meeting them. And then so the, the, there's a process the Trills can go through that will enable them to do exactly uh, what needs to happen, which is to give one personality, this big personality, an opportunity to come out. With no other options, Dr. Culber decides, you know what, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take one for the team. Dr. Culber takes on this personality. The actor who, does, who plays Dr. Colby does an amazing job with this. It really is fun seeing a new personality come out. Anytime you see something like that happen in uh, in Star Trek, I've always loved, I've always enjoyed those kinds of, those kind that kind of treading forward, moving to sort of the, the getting to see actors play, uh, play other characters other than themselves is always fun. And so they go, there's this whole process. He He's asking them questions and talking about them and they're asking questions back. We find out the full backstory. There were a group of scientists shortly after the progenitor's technology, the president at the time of the Federation, called together these six scientists who were from different, some of them non-Federation worlds, Romulan scientists, everybody, and said, go forth and find. Find out what seek and find, find this thing out. So they did. They found, they tracked it and found the progenitor technology, and it was unbelievable and awesome. These scientists knew. They knew that it would be dangerous in the hands of the wrong people. And at that time, because Burnham even asked the question, why did you this and that? Since it was the height of the, like the Dominion War was in full swing. We didn't know who we could trust. We didn't realize, I mean, literally, and I'm, it's such a great callback. As I've stated now on more than one occasion, this show does amazing when it remembers it's part of the greater canon, when it remembers that it's part of a bigger legacy. And what I really loved about this particular moment is that it, is that it was a one-off. By that I mean, yeah, it was the Dominion War. It was this and that. Well, it wasn't a major, like, they didn't show a graph bank. They didn't sit on it too long. It was something that was said in passing. The Dominion War was raging. Everyone saw an enemy in everyone else. And we knew that technology could be used for great destruction. That makes the world feel more lived in. And a world that feels more lived in, for those of us who've been a part of Starfleet, or been a part of Star Trek, or been fans of whatever forever and ever and ever, that gives us a joy to realize that we have the opportunity to see what came next. Finally, to see a culture where the Dominion War is as far back as World War III has been for those of us who've watched the TOS and TNG forever and ever and ever. So I'm, I'm excited to kind of see, I like, I like that. I love that lifted feel. Anyway. Uh, the guy manages to lead them to a place. There are these big giant creatures that can cloak themselves in this whole situation where Book and and uh, and and Burnham have to make some sort of a, they have to hide and they're trying to do what they can. And they have to figure out this is a breeding ground. They find the eggs of this creature. Book gets injured and finally she's like, "Look, with Xenobiology one one, you got to make peace with the, with the with the creature you're observing." And so she does her best, palms out, no weapon, and she tells Book to use his uh, use his power, Quijon powers to communicate with it, and finally. It does, and she, he says, he goes, they're going to let us leave. And they leave. They find Dr. Culver Bix, slash Bix, rather, uh, not too far away. And they're like, she's like, really? You knew this was a thing. You knew it was a trap. Why is that? He's like, I had to know what you were going to do when it came to a vastly more dangerous, uh, vastly more dangerous culture. Um, and were, were, would you try to communicate? Would you do any of those things? What, what would you do? And... As a result, they have they have earned the next piece. He gives it to them. The, the, the coordinates are on there. Meanwhile, they've already found out. Their uh, lock and ball have to be on the way, and so they're wrapping everything up. They go back to the thing. They do the thing. They take the the personality out of Culver, 
And that's where, when they're leaving, there's, now remember I said we'd come back to, to uh, we'd come back to Adira. As they're leaving, Adira is, did, did everyone give him hugs? Did everyone this and that? Maul, who's hiding in disguise as a trill, and everyone's hugging and giving, shaking hands and whatnot, puts something on Adira's sleeve that blends into the sleeve. Probably some sort of a programmable matter uh, uh, tracking device of some sort. And so now they're going to have the opportunity or the ability to get ahead and catch, to catch what's going on or what's actually happening. So there you go. Now you know. And knowing half the battle, you were halfway to beat the it yourself. I'm so excited for this episode. Uh, not because it, was, it wasn't it was huge, but I see the threads. The one thing doing this job I've learned to really appreciate is how some filler episodes have a lot of tremendous value. This is one of those. I saw the groundwork they're laying. Is this an episode I'll probably watch again in the future? I don't know, I might skip it in the future. Only because I know I now I know these things. But the first time you watched it, it's pretty exciting and there's, because there's so many things that are happening. It isn't like last week's episode, the last two episodes, and it isn't like uh, a, a very super exciting episode, but it's on the journey and it's taking us there. I'm here for it. My, my vote, I'm going to give this a Noel Index rating of eight. This episode is an eight. Solid 8, 8.0 out of 10. All right, guys, comment below. Let me know what you thought of the episode. Did you enjoy where they're going with this? Do you like what happened with some of the other characters? Uh, I, I don't know how I feel about Rainer yet. I feel like they, they don't know whether they make him a full jerk or give him that big of an arc. I know this actor plays some of prickly characters like this, so I'm, I'm used to that especially if you've seen Battlestar Galactic and the like. Comment below, let me know yourself what you thought. I can't wait to talk to you guys. Do me a favor. Uh, the one thing that I would love to do is invite you to get caught up. Listen to some of the past ones. Are you a big Star Trek fan? If you're a Star Trek fan, do me a favor. Check out the playlist right over here. I have two playlists. The first is for Star Trek Strange New Worlds, and the second is for Star Trek Picard. We all about Star Trek here. Also going to invite you to watch the most recent uh, uh, know-it-all files, where we have a whole lot of information there as well. Never forget... Everyone loves a know-it-all.